What's going on everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. In today's video, I'm going to test the latest version of the RPCSX PS3 emulator for Android on the high-end Adreno 6 series GPU phone. The settings also apply the same for other Snapdragon devices. So, let's get into it. As usual, this is the official RPCSX GitHub page. Let's go to the releases section. In this update, they fixed some issues. Also, this time, they've added support for Android 10 devices. In the last update, the minimum requirement to run this emulator was Android 12 or higher. They've improved compilation speed, fixed some bugs, and resolved a few other issues. Anyways, you can directly download and install it as an update. So here I have already updated RPCSX, and the phone I'm using right now is the Galaxy S21 powered by the Snapdragon 888 with the Adreno 660 GPU. I'll go ahead and close everything. Now let's open RPCSX. Everything is the same as usual. I've already installed some games. If we go to system info, you can see the phone is properly configured with the Adreno 660 turnip driver. Now let's go to settings and then to custom GPU driver. Here I've already imported some drivers. If you want to add more drivers, you can simply import them. If you're using an Adreno 6 series GPU, I always recommend using the Turnip 24.3 driver, whether you're on Snapdragon 870, 860, or lower. Set the driver that works best for your device. If you're using a lower-end Adreno GPU like the 610 or 6119, then I recommend using the Turnip 24.1.0 driver for better support. Here I've set it to Turnip version 24.3 revision 7. Of course, Turnip 25 can also work well on some Adreno 6 series GPUs. Now go to Advanced Settings. I'll leave everything to default here. You don't need to change anything. Next, go to Video Settings. As usual, set the resolution to the lowest, 480p. Set Shader Precision to Low. Enable Right Color Buffers, Depth Buffer, and Read Color Buffers. This will help avoid graphical errors in some games like God of War 3 and others. Now go to Vulkan Settings. Under Custom Driver, make sure Turbo Mode is enabled. You can also enable Performance Overlay if you want an FPS counter. Let's increase the size a bit to make it easier to see. Alright, so these are the recommended settings. Now let's get back to the main screen. And now it's time for the test. Let's first start with GTA 5 and see how it goes. Alright, as you can see, it looks better this time compared to past updates. It's almost utilizing over 90% of this phone's CPU. But again, if we play the same game using Game Fusion or Win Later, we actually get better performance. And of course, that's because those are Windows PC emulators. The translation layer is completely different compared to PS3 emulation. The PS3 is notoriously difficult to emulate due to its unique and complex architecture, even though the games are relatively small in size. So yeah, it's a completely different challenge. Also, this is still in the development stages. This project might take one to two years to perfectly emulate PS3 titles on Android. Some of my subscribers are also asking about iPhone support. Well, I'm sorry, it even struggles a lot to emulate PS2 on the iPhone I tested recently, thanks to the security restrictions of JIT compilation. So what can we expect from it? Well, you can still play console games available on the App Store, so why worry? Okay, for older generation iPhones like the 15 or lower, I'm sorry, but for sure, maybe you'll see emulators for iPhone in the future, thanks to the EU. They've already made it free for third-party support, but still a big question. And if you're getting any graphical glitches, you can try other turnip drivers. Some may run better on version 25 as well. So that's it for today's test on RPCSX new update. The development is still ongoing, but we're seeing progress. Hopefully, we'll see more improvements soon. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.